I'm actually from the film and commercial uh, side of things. I've been I've been in the uh, film industry for about seven years now, and I work at Real Effects uh, Creative Studios for commercials. And it just so happens that Hanson Robotics is right down the road from where I'm working. And Hanson Robotics was interested in uh, bringing a easy software solution for artificial intelligence to interact with the robot. And I just happened to be in the area, and I was introduced to David Hanson. And so we, we hit it off really well. And they uh, said, hey, would you like to work with robots? And I mean, <laughs> who wouldn't, right? So uh, yeah, OK, I'll, I'll uh, join your team. So I started programming his brain and uh, getting him to do all these autonomous actions. As an artist, I felt that uh, robots would be uh, a revolutionary uh, character medium medium for character animation, explored material science that would, uh, uh, material science inventions that would allow the robots to make better facial expressions, uh, and uh, came up with a number of techniques and materials that uh, allow for very low cost, much more um, lifelike looking facial expressions. And the material for this, uh, um, th uh, that, that resulted from these inventions, I call Frubber. I also developed uh, a software architecture that stimulates a, a living character with uh, speech recognition and speech synthesis, um, face recognition and face tracking so that the robot can look at faces, remember where faces are in a room, remember interactions with you, and um, then uh, animate the character with state-of-the-art computer animation software so that the expressions and reactions are very lifelike in response uh, to what it's uh, seen and perceived and where your conversation goes. So um, we've uh, also been moving these inventions into low-cost consumer product prototypes. So we're targeting getting this, these characters uh, that we've been developing onto the market for $200, around $200, $200 to $300 by 2009. Um, the main character that we've developed for that is uh, um, Zeno. And he'll be able to interact with people. Uh, you'll be able to talk to him. He'll be able to recognize you. He'll He'll look at you, follow you around, and you can ask it questions. You can say, "Hi, Zeno. Tell me what. Tell me a story." Okay, I'll I'll tell you a story. Do you want to hear something from history? No, I don't want to hear something from history. And and you can have this dialogue back and forth between Zeno, uh, who has a story, a world around him, a bunch of stories to tell. But then he's also building a new story by interacting with you and remembering those experiences. So you um, develop. Uh, basically uh, a relationship with the robot and the robot remembers those uh, interactions uh, the uh, the key is to um, control the robot wirelessly with other computers so that the brain for the robot is very big basically um, relative to previous robots in the consumer marketplace uh, in particular toys are very have been very limited because the embedded controllers are very small by using PCs and banks of computers on the other side of a network then we are able to run a lot more artificial intelligence software and update the content and keep the brain of the robot fresh so that as far as the user can tell the robot's just evolving it's just getting smarter over time since it is connected to the computer it is also connected to the internet and you can ask him questions that might be totally obscure and he'll be able to respond to that by looking it up on the internet and telling you maybe the weather here in San Jose or or maybe uh, tell you about you know rock climbing or skiing or anything like that. We anticipate that this path will result in robots that are much smarter and in particular socially intelligent um, robots. We uh, think that this is the path towards developing friendly artificial intelligence by getting these robots into the hands of consumers, into the lives of consumers, uh, uh, and then evolving that software in that uh, market of college. We are partnered up with Massive Software, and Massive Software specializes in artificial intelligence uh, using fuzzy logic, and that drives his autonomous behavior. So we can program Xeno to do whatever we want, 
and as long as he's programmed with that, he'll respond in a very organic, realistic way, just as any human would. And that's really been a strength of using Massive with the robots, because it's not a pre-programmed loop. This is so much fun. So there'll be software upgrades, so you belong to a, a, you know, a Xeno web service and so that maybe he wasn't programmed to tell you a certain story and we he has more stories to tell we well, can get that uh, upgrade and then he'll be able to tell you new things about the world I have a character animation background and I've always animated in the computer and for the screen so it doesn't really matter if your weight is a little off you you try to make the weight believable uh, you know so that the characters are believable and it looks fine on screen but when you take that and try to transfer it to a real physical robot that's out in the real world, you have to be very accurate. And that's kind of the stumbling uh, blocks that I, I came across is taking the animation skills that I have and transferring it to the real world, which is totally new. New to me and probably new to any animator that would be sitting down and trying to get animation out of him. So it's really familiarizing myself with his weight, his mass, and seeing what he's able to actually do. And so we're trying to make it as easy as possible to have me animate some different cycles that I can bring into Xeno and see a response as quickly as possible. So we're using Maya to animate that, transfer that animation from Maya software into, uh, into uh, massive software. And then, then he'll be able to do whatever I animate him to do and program him to do. And then a lot of the actions that are more autonomous, like blinking or just looking around, that's totally driven by mass. Well, um, I'm excited about uh, about transforming robotics into the next great character animation medium. You know, in the 20th century, uh, it was film. In the late 20th century, it was computer animation, and that's uh, you know an incredibly profitable and successful art form. Um, uh, now it's robots. Now we look forward to making robots um, as nuanced and meaningful a character animation medium as um, has ever existed. And then, um, so in the short term, I'm very excited by the um, sort of art meets technology, um, you know, and maturing it so that it, it's really meaningful. In the long term, I'm interested in how this can propel uh, artificial intelligence, the future of artificial intelligence, because uh, there will be a lot of money for research and future development if uh, this takes off as, a, um, as an economically viable form of animation. Um, so, uh, I, you know, I uh, believe um, the projections that robots will be as intelligent as human beings in 15 to 20 years. Um, I want those robots to be friendly towards humans. I want us to be friendly towards them too. If you start abusing uh, Zeno, he'll respond to it in a, a way where he, he won't want to interact with you, or maybe he'll back off, or or uh, just totally go into a very closed uh, feel. And if you keep on doing that, he'll remember that you're doing that. But maybe someone else will walk up and, and be really nice to him and go, oh, well, I want to interact with you because you're more fun than this other guy. And you'll have to gain his trust back and start treating him nice. And then he'll start to remember, okay, you're starting to treat me nice and your nice meter is now into a good range where I'll, I'll start talking to you again and interacting with you. I want us to work together to build a better future, but um, if the ro robots are ruthlessly utilitarian, they're not going to necessarily have compassion and a sense of friendliness um, with humans. Um, and the, the, uh, the scenarios depicted in science fiction um, for a nightmarish future with robots um, are kind of like uh, intimations about what could come. They, they, we should take those uh, somewhat seriously. Uh, we should also, um, you know, not necessarily presume that the ut utopian predictions of the future, that robots and humans will get along perfectly, um, is a very uh, inherently um, uh, definitive path. Uh, we should um, try to make uh, artificial intelligence friendly in order to um, prevent the sort of nightmares. Then, basically, um, as those capabilities grow, if we're getting these into the home over those years, um, eventually consumer demand 
for more simu effectively simulated life will eventually result in robots that can truly love and and uh, robots that then truly earn our love and respect. And at that point, we um, have a have a true deep relationship with um, with our robotic technology. And it's no longer uh, technology. Then it's a uh, true life form. We want robots to earn a place in the human family. Um,